Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi guys and welcome to the Thursday, March 5th Texas Fly Fishing Report. Today I'm coming to you from Houston, Texas and as you can tell it's kind of a different uh, location, different background. I don't know how much you can tell actually just by the little bit of video you see. But anyway, on to the report. Uh, as I do these reports and as I actually the season changes and I'm able to fish more, obviously I want to bring you more reports person to person from the fly fishing I do here in Texas. Right now I'm near Houston, Texas in Spring, Texas and I was able to get over yesterday to a, a, a park on the north side of Houston. It's a Houston Wilderness Park on the north side of Lake Houston and really it's just a fantastic experience as far as how clean this park is and the, the people that work there are very nice and it, I've got some more information including GPS coordinates for the fishing I'm about to tell you about on my website www.texasflycaster.com the information that I release in this method has to be paper read because we, we kind of have to instill limits into the number of people that are able to read these hot spots and things like this. And, uh, you know, it's not, as I go forward, it's not actually a too hot of a spot. It's kind of a warm spot right now. And what we were doing yesterday, or I should say I was doing yesterday, is fly fishing for sand bass on a typical spring run. We've got red buds budding around here, and that's one of your signature uh, signs that says it's time to go hit the creeks for sand bass. So that's what I did and I managed to catch, I don't know, somewhere between 30 and 40 or 50 fish in a matter of four hours yesterday down there in those creeks that feed into the north side of Lake Houston. And uh, I was using those clousers, the white clousers that I showed you that I was tying just for that and a couple episodes ago or maybe in a photograph. and they work quite well. So white on white clousers are the thing you want. You know, I use circle hooks and I didn't lose any fish on these circle hooks at all. If they were big enough to bite, they were big enough to be hooked and they wouldn't get loose off of these circle hook clousers. Um, and the reason I do this is not to show you what I can do actually. I want to show you what you can do by giving you the right fly and the right location and, and the right timing to go catch these fish. I could you know, for me, it's about you guys, and you guys getting out and catching fish, and you show me where the action is. So in this case, it was a good day. Um, the fish were right about 10 inches, most of them, you know, which is legal to keep in Texas, but I don't, I hardly ever mess with 10-inch fish, so um, there's a few 12 inches in there, but just, just not very many. And from talking to the locals on the creek that I would run across, uh, what I heard was that the, these creeks used to run a lot higher and this time of the year, if you think about what sand bass do, they're looking for inspiration to uh, provide the effort to go up these creeks and that means water needs to be coming out of them and there's just not much water coming out. So the situation is, and fly fishing for the sand bass and, and here in, in Houston area, is that you're kind of going pool to pool and looking for areas that, where these fish might have gotten holed up or, or kind of or staging. Uh, they might not be able to go any further and sure enough you can you can sure exhaust the pool in about 15 minutes you can catch fish after fish every cast and then they'll turn off either because you caught them all I mean the pools aren't too huge uh, or because they they're keyed on your color so you, one way to continue a, a bite in sand bass and see just how many there might be is to change colors on your flies and, and continue to, to fish there but otherwise this is great access for for young people to get down in these creeks and casting isn't that difficult. I use a short rod for this, a 7-Eleven rod, and uh, it's really fun. I, I shot some video yesterday, but unfortunately, I don't know if I've got any of that video to show you because you've got to remember to keep your settings on extra wide angle on your GoPro Heroes, Hero 4 in this case, and uh, that way you can get the entire sweep of the thing. I was kind of operating by the seat of my pants yesterday, and and so uh, my settings were a little bit off on the GoPro. But anyway, check out the information. Like I said, when, you know, when it comes to information about fly fishing in Texas, uh, if I have first-hand information, that's going to be the priority of what I bring to you. And, and the information I bring will be first-hand information that you know that I went and did this. So 
Be sure to check out the website, pay to read the uh, extra information, GPS coordinates and things like that. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. If you like the videos you see here on the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel, feel free to subscribe. If you subscribe to the channel, then every time a new video goes up, you'll get a notice and you can go watch it or you can go give it a thumbs down or whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. I know that it's snowing in North Texas. I got about six inches of snow. It's pretty temperate down here. It's probably going to be in the upper 40s, lower 50s, maybe middle 50s. So might be able to get some salt in if this wind will just die down here on the Galveston area. But uh, I know you guys, and I feel so sorry for you guys in North Texas dealing with six inches of snow again. I just barely made it out in time. But have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week at Texas Flycaster. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it, and we'll be glad to get it on the report.